Good morning all. Here's another item that I bought on eBay really cheaply. It's one of these um, Canadian 99 cents items, so about 77 US cents or about 55p. So ultra cheap. What this is, is a little DC to DC boost converter. And you can see on the back it says DC to DC 5 volts out. So the idea is that you produce 5 volts for a USB connector. Now they haven't fitted the USB connector, which is why this is so cheap. But there's ground and there's 5 volts. And the input can be anything from 1 volt upwards. Let's take a look at that on eBay. So here it is, DC to DC boost converter step up module, 1 to 5 volts in to 5 volts out, up to 500 milliamps, although there are conditions associated with that. Power module new, 99 Canadian cents, 76 US cents, about 55p, free shipping, and this came from Internet Plus 15. So it's based around this little controller chip, it's a SOT89. Uh, style package. It's got the number E50D, so we'll look that up in a moment. Uh, there's an inductor here, a uh, little coil of wire wrapped around a ferrite bobbin, uh, a diode there to uh, produce the output, and I was going to solder an LED on the output, but there's actually no point because it's got an LED on the board with a 222 resistor. What's that? 2200, 2.2K. And you can see that that's strapped around from ground and uh, the resistor side to 5 volts. So all I need to do is put a low voltage uh, on the input side and see if that LED lights up. So I'm going to use a, a 1.2 volt nickel metal hydro. This is actually an Eneloop light. I'm just going to put the uh, ground and 5 volts. Getting the polarity correct, of course. So ground on there, 5 volts on there. And we have a little red LED. Now that doesn't really prove that we've got 5 volts on the output. Would a red LED light up on 1.2 volts without the boost converter? Hmm, well I suppose we could try it. Let's try it. Shouldn't need a resistor for this. I don't think it's going to light up. No, a red LED won't light up on 1.2 volts. So we do need the boost converter to provide the higher voltage. Let's check the output voltage of this converter. So let's measure the output voltage with a little digital voltmeter here. Now the reason I'm using this rather than a DVM is so that it draws uh, some current, puts a little bit of load on the device. It's not going to be much, about 50 milliamps probably. And what we've got is 5.025 volts. So really quite an accurate 5 volt output. So what's this little chip, this E50D? Let's look it up. So here on All About Circuits, we've got help identifying SMD parts. Can anyone ID these? And it looks like the same two devices on my board. In fact, it looks like it's the same board. The SS14 is a 1 amp 40 volt barrier diode. And then further down, any idea on the E50D? And someone said it's a CE8301 on a SOT89L package. And uh, here's a data sheet for the CE8301. It's a CMOS PFM pulse frequency modulation control step-up switching DC to DC converter, uh, which has a low voltage operation. It starts up at 0.9 volts. So in a way, it's a little bit dual thiefy. You can get uh, this thing to fire up and produce 5 volt output with uh, as low as 0.9 volts on the input. Lots of other spec here. So this, it would appear as a CE8301A because it's in a SOT89 three-pin package. And you can order this device in a range of different output voltages uh, from 1.8 volts all the way up to 5.0 volts. This was a pretty accurate 5.0 volts on the output. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful here. If you put three volts in, you can only draw 5 volts out up to about 100 milliamps. And if you put correspondingly less voltage on the input, uh, like I've got 1.2 volts here, I can't really get much more than 10 or 20 milliamps 
uh, with uh, uh, 5 volts out with 1.2 volts going in, um, I can get a little bit more current at a lower output voltage, but things drop off very rapidly when you're at 1 volt or 0.9 volts going into this device. So let's see how low it will go. I've set my little power supply unit here to one volt. Let's switch on. So one volt is being converted up to five volts. Now let's start bringing this down. So that's 0 0.9, that's, oh, 0 0.5. Well, that's interesting because the output still seems to be um, generated enough current for an LED, that is, at 0.5 volts in. How low do I have to go before that tails off? Well, this is quite surprising. 0.18 volts, 0.1 volts, and I mean, it still can produce something, not very much, and probably not five volts. Uh, with this down at 0.1 volts input, that's quite surprising. I thought it would just simply go off long before that. I suppose we could look at that voltage on a DVM as well. And uh, yes, there does seem to be quite a good correlation between the display on my power supply. This is down at 50 millivolts. We've got 65 millivolts on the DVM. Let's take that up to 0.1. 100 millivolts. This is showing 113, but we are getting an output at 100 millivolts in. Um, 200 millivolts. Yeah, so I mean the power supply and the DVM correlate reasonably well. And this thing is generating an output. It may not be the full 5 volts but it is lighting an LED from some very surprisingly low input voltages of almost as low as 50 millivolts or thereabouts. Quite surprising. So I think for uh, 55p, this is pretty neat. Here it is running off a tiny little AG4 uh, watch battery, 1.5 volts, and driving the LED. And this battery could go down to, well, we've seen it go down to I don't know, 100 millivolts, and still the LED remains alight. So yes, it makes a very good replacement for a jewel thief. So I'm going to call this an eBay cheap and cheerful, because it works. It turns anything from uh, 0.9 volts on the input, actually a lot less, if you're willing to uh, sacrifice a bit of brightness on the LED on the output, uh, turns it into 5 volts. For 50p, I think that's pretty good. Cheerio.